My ethnic heritage and cultural background is uh, Trinidadian Ghanaian. I'm of mixed heritage, so my mom uh, was born in Germany and my maternal grandmother is German and my maternal grandfather is Rwandan. On my father's side, he is Tanzanian. I am of Ghanaian ethnic heritage, living in Canadian soil. I'm black or Malawian and Canadian. Uh, so my father is from St. Vincent and my mom came from uh, Saskatchewan. So I'm mixed, uh, half black and half white. My heritage I consider to be African, Malawian, African and uh, black Canadian. I am Caribbean, born and raised in Trinity Bateau. My family is from Ghana in West Africa. I am Canadian born, the one in my family actually who is born in Canada. I was born and raised in Malawi, Africa. I moved here to Edmonton, Canada in 1993. I was born and raised here in Edmonton. My mother's from Trinidad and Tobago, and my dad's from Ghana, and uh, I was born here in Edmonton, Alberta. I was born in Edmonton. So my background is that I migrated to Canada in 1998. I was born in Trinidad, of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, I'd been going through like a weird thing in my mind where I was like, I'm not African, I'm not Malawian. And I cried, I cried. It was on my birthday too, I was so sad, I cried. Um, but the reason I cried was because ethnically, sure, especially here, sure, I'm, I'm Malawian, but I wanted to be Malawian to my family and to my friends, and um, I wasn't. Until like seventh or eighth grade, I lied to everyone and said that I was born in Malawi and I lived there for four years before coming here, which isn't true. I had an elaborate backstory and everything. It was, it was sad, it was unfortunate. I used to like, like, switch my accent a little bit just to sound more like I'm from Africa. Like it was the stupidest thing, but at the same time, I still feel myself wanting to do that every time someone asks me where I'm from because if I say I was born here and I was raised here, but I still went to Malawi every summer, I feel like it doesn't count for anything. So when I'm here, yeah, I'm, I'm black, I'm African. Probably here I feel more African than I do when I'm in Malawi because of the amount of jokes that I'll get or from my Malawian friends where they're like, ah, you Canadians. And I'm like, but I'm you too. Um, but at the same time here, I feel like it's so westernized and there's racism and there's all that other fun stuff. And it's like, which, which would I rather live with? Which would I rather tolerate? To be honest, I don't think I really do navigate it. I think I, I wake up <laughs> and then I, find out what my mindset's gonna be that day and then I go to bed and then I wake up again and I decide maybe it's gonna be different, maybe it isn't. But I just, I try my hardest to incorporate as much Malawi as I can into here. Um, to stay with my roots and myself. <laughs> Now, as far as I can remember, uh, having moved here from, like I said, Malawi, coming into Edmonton, um, one, of the, um, one of the things that I had to learn was I had to assume a new identity. Coming from Malawi, I was a Malawian African, that's how I identified myself. And then moving to uh, Edmonton, Canada, there was this identity that I didn't realize that I'm supposed to assume at the time. but. Uh, but I ended up uh, assuming, and in order for me to do that, I felt like I needed to learn a little bit more. And so I started reading a lot about uh, how black people ended up in Canada, 
Um, one of my favorite books I actually ended up being the autobiography of Malcolm X because I wanted to know North American experience. What was that like? like my family they had immigrated here but they were dealing with different things because they had immigrated so long ago so my parents were educated they were professionals so I had a different experience than someone who whose parents are just trying themselves to get set up and then yeah very much so like I have the I understand I experience the cultural references which in some ways that that can help or make it a bit easier um, but I was always, I remember growing up, I was always curious about my black identity. So I was always curious about like kind of wonder, like, of course, cause I did Afro quiz, but I was always wondering like, kind of like, how come other people don't know about this? Or when I was growing up, I would always invite my friends to Afro quiz to come like watch me compete. And I was quite proud of that. Being curious about this black identity that I have, like, what does it really mean? And then how does, how do I kind of unpack that? How a black person can find their identity, I think is really individual. But for, for, my, for my experience, it's been an ongoing journey, kind of honoring my own identity and trying to understand like where exactly I fit. And so even growing up, I remember being like really excited that finally we have some black kids at school. But then at some point I realized like, we can be friends, but we don't have the same life experience. We don't have the same, quite the same identity, but we do have kind of things that we can understand. But then vice versa, as I got older, um, you know, meeting other Africans who are my age, um, and even if they didn't grow up here um, or had immigrated recently, it was also kind of um, quite comfortable because a lot of the things that they did or knew about or wanted to talk about were things that were familiar for me at home so I could kind of walk in that world as well and it felt very comfortable too. Uh, so again, as I'm the one who is born in Canada, they came in 1982. My father is an accountant and my grandfather was actually here in Calgary though, before we came here. He's a professor. He's an English professor actually, which is interesting because my African grandfather was teaching English to many people. And part of uh, my parents coming here was to join him or to be part of that family. My grandpa had come and learned a lot of opportunity, connected with different families, and that's what brought us here to Alberta. So the reason that my particular family migrated to Edmonton is um, my dad worked in the oil industry, which is what Alberta is known for, and then my mom, um, she had done her post-secondary in Canada, so she already had her Canadian papers, so it was a easy choice, an easy fit. My father came initially in, in the late 70s um, as an engineer and he started out in Toronto and then made his way to Edmonton and then um, my mom came, he sponsored my mom and she came in 1985. My dad was a civil engineer and he found work here in Edmonton and, and moved to Edmonton. My mom followed and um, so did the rest of our family. Uh, representation in schooling and everywhere matters. I think because it's important for not just black people, but all people in the world to see people who look like them doing things in the world. So doing positive things. Often we're uh, given images of black people in particular. Uh, you'll see them on the news and when that happens that's a like a negative form of representation where people feel oh no somebody well, somebody murdered something oh my god are they black and you worry about that because that's representation that we seem to take on those negative attributes but don't really see ourselves in positive light so I think representation within schools is a really great way to show kids 
um, black people are doing regular things and great things, not just negative things maybe that you see on the news or in movies. There is no history being taught in, in school about um, black history. I learned all about the Russian Revolution, Rara Rasputin. I could tell you about the French Revolution in Canada, but about the history, a part that in the world, I, I'm none the wiser. I don't know what makes a curriculum choose Russia versus continent of Africa, but here we are. Yeah, now that I think about it, um, slavery was something I did learn about growing up and I was aware of, but it absolutely did present those negative feelings. And all of a sudden you're in a classroom, you're in an educational setting where you're seeing, maybe for the first time, some representation of black people in the educational space. And it's absolutely terrible stuff of how black people are being treated. And honestly, in, in some times where like the history of slavery is presented, you feel kind of like an internal tension and discomfort and it, it's not a positive feeling to think about that and feel that. But then on the other hand, if I look at AfroQuiz and the way that Cash presented that education of black history, there was a lot of positive things that I didn't learn growing up of inventors, uh, creators, artists. And instead of that feeling of, of tension and negativity, it's like, joy and curiosity about really like a black person did that or that 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 really significant thing came from the idea generated from a black individual so like really inspiring and completely different feel knowing what i know now about amber valley i absolutely feel like that should be taught uh, it wasn't something i was aware of growing up but it was once I learned about it, I felt like everyone should know this. It, it needs to be part of our, our educational um, curriculum to, to provide awareness about it. I mean, it matters to have people who see things or experience the world in a similar way that you do. Um, your racial identity really does have an impact in, in how you see the world and how you experience the world. And then also just, it's really nice, sometimes you just don't have to explain things and people just understand because they're from a similar community. And so it was almost like a kind of a relief when I ended up with an instructor who was black, or a supervisor who was black. And I was like, oh yeah, like you just get it. And um, so there's a degree of comfort that I actually didn't really know that I needed until I got one. Their lived experience is so different from your own and oftentimes as black people we have to kind of spend a lot of time and energy explaining kind of how we do things or how like what we've learned from home and, and sometimes that can make you feel uncomfortable and um, even if you're not fully aware so just having um, that first time when I first started having a, a black supervisor just made a huge difference. Specifically with education, we don't have representation in the schools. Kids need to have an identity, they need to have an understanding. You can only learn so much about European history, for instance, uh, and then the kids only know about, well, people came here as enslaved Africans, but what, what about the history prior to that? Um, uh, it's important for them to know that. And even beyond that, what are people doing now in the diaspora as well as on the continent? Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of kids who probably be asked in school, um, um, do they have uh, do they have airports in Malawi or do they have, you know, because the, the, the images that they see here are only of, you know, people, uh, you know, animals or people going for safaris and all of that, but, but there are whole cities out there. There's a whole, um, people drive expensive cars too, people, you know, we talk about Afrobeast, there's a whole culture that's going on out there that uh, that people need to learn about. Representation matters because it, it says there's people like you here in the community that make a difference, that are important uh, contributors to society. 
and it says to you, especially whether you're a person growing up or a person that has aspirations, it says you can also be like that one day. It, it shows you that a variety of people can, can make a difference with a variety of backgrounds and ethnicities, so it's really important. Who is the grumpiest snake in the jungle? That is correct. Contestant Fatsani Saliwa regained her first place title at this year's competition in her nine and under age category. I think it's inspiring to everybody, but especially me because there's lots of things that I did not know and I have lots of heroes. I just thought Africa was a country where there's just stuff and it's hot, but now I know that there's lots of more things that you can learn from. I grew up watching TV and the only dark-skinned woman that I ever saw was um, Zuri from Jessie. Um, and everyone used to tell me I, look, I looked like her and I was like, do I look like her or are we just both black? You know what I mean? I never saw me and that really, it very much contributed to what I thought was pretty, to what I thought was acceptable, to what I thought was right. What's so important for me is that my brother grows up in a day and age where he sees himself on screen. You know, I feel like the, the girls that are growing up today with The Little Mermaid being black, um, that is something that I wish I could have grown up with. I mean, if we're looking at it, the only other person that I really had was maybe Tiana, Princess of the Frog, but she was a frog half of the movie, which I think is a very fun little, like, cop out for Disney to make, but hey, you know what, we have a black princess. I mean, does she go ribbit half the time? Yes, but she's a black princess. Come on, like, you know what I mean? Like that's, it's like, yeah, that's progress, but it's really, like, I just wish that, I, I want girls to see themselves and be like, okay, that can be pretty, that can be something acceptable. I know that like, if I'm going to audition for this thing, I know that I have a good chance of making it as much as the next girl. Representation is so, very, very, very important, um, more for young minds, because I feel like as we grow up, yes, we can learn that we are still pretty and we are still this and we are still that, but five-year-olds don't really have that mindset yet, so it's crucial. I think as a younger person, sometimes you're unaware of how representation can impact you. Um, not seeing people that look like you in certain roles might not provoke the thought of, hey, I could be like that someday, or I could do that someday. You're kind of just used to seeing what's around you. Um, yeah. I think uh, having that representation in, in our education system is really valuable because it, it definitely was something that was absent when I grew up and a, I think that it kind of left me not feeling like I was, um, you know, sort of good enough as a person or uh, able to um, do the kinds of things that other kids were able to do. And so having that uh, for my kids has been fantastic. Uh, my daughter is lucky enough to go to a school um, because it is a French immersion school. There are uh, some uh, black students as well as actually black teachers there and uh, that's kind of been uh, a blessing because that definitely was was not uh, something that that I had and she has been lucky enough to have a black teacher th for three years of her school so far uh, which is pretty close to half of the years that she's been attending school uh, my son hasn't had any black teachers but between the two uh, as, as far as the students go, um, it's definitely a lot more uh, culturally diverse, for sure. Uh, I mean, and that expands beyond um, black students. So there's uh, all sorts of different cultures that just simply weren't uh, weren't in Edmonton when I was growing up. Uh, usually, there was maybe one or two kids of you know sort of if you will each kind of ethnic group or each culture <laughs> in school, and that was pretty much the the extent of it. So it's it's really nice to actually see um, my kids interact with with all the different kids and you know just really 
it's a way more enriching experience for them. I started AfroQuiz when I was eight years old and it was an annual thing and definitely a lot of the black people that I know today and, and at that time too, what we would all meet there. And then the only other thing that I remember seeing lots of black people at was Carrie West. Um, that I remember the parade growing up and that I would always be, we'd always be so surprised at like how many black people actually live in Edmonton um, that we see every year at the parade. So those were kind of the two main places, especially as a kid growing up. Black, black culture was not easy to find. As a matter of fact, um, I, I, I always uh, marvel at how people that I've known back then, um, Maybe I never used to talk to them, but I would always use to see them in certain spaces, right? So at the time, obviously my first sort of entry into sort of black culture in Edmonton was through the African community. And so there was um, like the Ghana community was big at the time. Ghana and Nigerian community have always been big. And so in the early 90s, that was from the African perspective, that was one culture that uh, you would uh, sort of get to know. And um, for me, because I play soccer, there were actually two teams. There was one African team and one Caribbean team called Roots United. And that's another sort of uh, community that I, I, I got to know from the Caribbean perspective. And of course, uh, they were, this, there was always, um, I think Carrie West had studied at that time as well. Um, and, and so they were, but the community was really small. And so if there was a black event, um, uh, people from whether you're African or Caribbean or whatever, it didn't matter. You get to see each other in the same spaces and you get to interact and uh, get to know each other. Actually, Heritage Days is interesting because I remember as a kid, we would always go and like your parents would see, like my mom would see all the people she knows and you'd kind of see people that you knew. But then at school, like no one really talked about Heritage Days or it was kind of like the immigrant festival, whereas like now it's such a huge festival. But I have lots of memories kind of growing up, going to Heritage Days and seeing people from the community every year.